Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.4 and Eagle Dynamics F16C Viper Module. Welcome to tutorial 14, Maverick Handoff and Force Correlate. Please refer to my previous Maverick tutorial on all the normal employment methods for the Maverick, that is pre-planned, visual, and bore sight. Today we're going to go over the handoff mode and force correlate modes. Now handoff mode is when you use the targeting pod to target a particular location uh, or well, point track, you need a point track in fact. Uh, and then in automatic mode the targeting pod will slew and lock the Maverick for you and you can then simply fire. In manual mode it will only slew the missile. You then still need to switch sensor of interest to the Maverick, lock and then fire. Force correlate mode uh, basically allows you to, rather than centroid track, which is the standard method of locking the Maverick, that's where it locks the center of a particular target, uh, you can actually define a point on the target which you would like to strike. Now this is only really useful of course for much larger static targets like buildings or ships, uh, but it means that you can strike a particular point on that target. Um, there are some limitations with these different modes. Automatic handoff is only available in the D and G models of the Maverick. That is the small warhead infrared seeker and the large warhead infrared seeker versions. Manual handoff is available for all four models of the Maverick uh, on the F-16. So that is the both infrared versions and both CCD versions. Force correlate mode is only available for the large warhead versions of the Maverick. So that would be the G with an infrared seeker and the K with a CCD seeker. They're the only ones capable of force correlate. So uh, I'm inbound the range, uh, as in the previous Maverick video. Uh, I've got six AGM 65Ds. Those are the small warhead infrared guided versions. And I'm first going to demonstrate handoff, both in automatic and manual modes. Now I've got these loaded on LAU-88 racks. These can only take the small warhead versions of the Maverick, so that would be the D and the H versions. Uh, if you're going to carry G or Ks, they can only be carried singly on the pylon. And with the rack, you can actually carry them singly, doubles or triples, as I've got here today. Uh, Mavericks can only be carried on pylons 3 or 7, as seen here. So. Let's jump into the cockpit and let's get set up. I've got steer point one selected here, uh, and that is the location of the eastern bomb circle. So, need to make sure master arm is on. I'm going to go laser arm on. I'm going to select air to ground mode, and it's by default selected uh, my Mavericks here on the right hand page. Uh, this was all already covered in the previous video, so I'm just going to very quickly make sure that everything is as it should be. Uh, we're in air to ground mode. I need to be in pre planned mode for this to work. Uh, I've got my 6x AGM 65D selected and they're powered on. I could ripple them if I wanted with this particular setup, but I'm not going to. Uh, and it's confirming that I've got them on pylons 3 and 7, and I can tap nose wheel steering to flip between those two. Next thing I need to make sure is that my targeting pod is ready to use. Uh, so right hard point is on and radar altimeter is on. Perfect. Next, I'm going to bring up my targeting pod and my weapon page. So I'm going to press display management switch right twice to get to my targeting pod. And on the left MFD, I'm going to replace the FCR with the weapon page. And there we go, we can now see the Maverick. It's actually, when you're doing automatic handoff, it is of course not necessary to have the weapon page up. But I'm going to leave it up just to make life a little bit easier for us. Okay, I'm now going to go ahead and set up the targeting pod so that we can do what we want to do. Uh, air to ground master mode has already been selected, that's perfect. This is the handoff mode. We're currently in manual, that's the default. I'm going to switch to auto uh, and then I'll demonstrate the manual mode later. Uh, I'm now going to press uh, cursor zero. Actually, I'm going to do sensor select switch aft twice, so I have the targeting pod selected. Uh, cursor zero should mean that I'm pointing straight at uh, the, the currently selected target point. I'm going to switch into white hot mode, and I'm going to go into narrow field of view. I currently cannot see the target, but that's probably because I'm a little bit too far out as of right now. So, uh, I'm going to get the aircraft a little bit closer to the target area, and then you can rejoin me when we're ready to employ the missile. 
Okay, you rejoin me now a little bit closer into the target. I have my target now on the TGP. Note that as I slew my TGP around, it's also slewing the Maverick on the left-hand display there. We're just inside maximum range. I'm going to FOV in on the Maverick, and I'm going to press Teamus forward on the targeting pod to do an INR track. And that should send the targeting information to the Maverick. I'm going to try again. And again, it's not getting a lock on that particular target. And there we go. Now it's now it's uh, locked. I'm going to press fire. And we have rifle. So that took a couple of moments. It took more than one attempt. Uh, but the missile in the end did lock up. So uh, that should be a hit. Let's just watch that go in. And uh, note that I didn't have to press anything on the Maverick weapon page at all. I was able to control that entire launch from the targeting pod. Oh, I actually had the wrong thing targeted, but in any case, that, that, is, uh, <laughs> that is what I was pointed at. So, uh, let me just quickly go over the symbology that you see on the Maverick page, by the way. Uh, we've now switched to Rack 7. Uh, yeah, you see this handoff in progress thing. It's going to continually try to hand off to the Maverick, but it's no longer within gimbal limits. Um, so, above the station, you're going to have a letter. Now, by default, it will just be an S, and that simply confirms that the missile is slaved to the targeting pod. T means it's attempting a track. Number 1 means the track is incomplete but in progress, and C means that it's complete, and at that stage you can fire the missile. Uh, you'll notice that I it took me more than one attempt to get the handoff to be successful, uh, so the first time I did INR, sorry, the first time I did TMS forward, it didn't enter a point track, so my targeting pod was unable to actually get uh, a, a kind of seam lock on that particular target. I then pressed TMS right to put it back into area, and then I pressed TMS forward again to attempt uh, a point track again. It will only do a handoff on a point track, so that's the very important thing to note here. Okay, I'm going to get the aircraft reset now, and we're going to do the same thing again, but this time we're going to do it in manual mode. Okay, so we're inbound the target again. Notice I've now switched handoff to manual. I've got the target on screen again. So I'm going to press TMS forward. And I'm successfully in a point track. Now notice that that's immediately slewed my Maverick over that target, but it hasn't attempted a lock. And that's actually just as well, because we're massively out of range uh, of being able to do that. So let's uh, just center down on the left-hand multifunction display now. I'm going to press display management switch aft to make this my sensor of interest and I'm now just waiting until we're in a sensible range. I'm going to FOV in as well just to make this easier. Uh, but it's going to continue automatically tracking that target even though it hasn't locked. I'm going to let it get down to just under 8 miles. Press TMS forward. It's trying to lock. The gate hasn't collapsed. I'm going to try again. Oh, it's locked, but that's actually not the right target. Let's try again. And this time it's locked. And rifle. So, as you can see, almost exactly the same process. The only difference being that we need to manually do the lock afterwards. Um, and the manual mode of handoff is available for all Maverick missiles. Uh, but be aware that the automatic handoff can only be carried out with D and G model Mavericks. Okay, let's reset and do some force correlate. Okay, so we're back inbound towards the target range. Uh, you'll see now that I have two times AGM-65G missiles on the aircraft. These are the infrared-guided large warhead variant. You need large warhead to be able to employ force correlate mode. So let's bring up the targeting pod. Let's have a little look at the target area once again. And there we go. There's our bombing circle that I want to engage. I'm going to make the targeting pod uh, sensor of interest. I'm going to do a manual handoff just to make my life easier. 
uh, because the, the G is capable of manual handoff, and we're then going to force correlate it. Now, just to, to refresh your memories, force correlate is the alternative to centroid track, which is the standard way in which uh, a Maverick will track. Centroid track simply means it will find the center of a given target and target that. If we want to target an exact point on the ground, on a building, or on a ship, or basically anything that's large and static, we would use force correlate mode. And in that mode, it won't automatically shift its aim to the center of the target, it will aim wherever we put the crosshair. So, uh, I'm going to come out of active pause, uh, I'm going to get the aircraft to just fly towards that steer point automatically, just to make my life easier. We're going to zoom in on the left screen, and what we're interested in here is the HOC. So this is this would normally allow you to switch uh, hot on cold, cold on hot symbology, uh, or you can put it into area. There we go. We've now got it in area mode. In area mode, it will be possible for us to uh, get, gain a lock basically at any point within the scene. We need to get a little bit closer first though. Let's uh, FOV in and let's press display management switch down to make this our sensor of interest. Just going to slew around a little bit just to make sure that it's working nicely and I'm going to find a point on the ground. So I'm going to target just to the right hand side of the center of the bomb circle. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to press TMS forward and you'll see that the uh, the cursor collapsed immediately. It didn't try to track anything. I'm going to do TMS aft and move it around again. And whenever I do that, I need to put it back into the area track mode. It's a long press on this button to do that. So yeah, let's say that I'm going to target just the very edge of the circle here. TMS forward, I immediately get a lock and rifle. We're now going to monitor that impact over here on the targeting pod. Just going to make it sensor of interest again zoom all the way out and I targeted pretty much here uh, so you should see that that's pretty much where it's going to hit. Might need the expanded field of view here. Let's see what it does. There! Yep, that's pretty much exactly where I aimed it. Now, of course, the the field of view and the um, clarity of the Maverick Seeker makes it a little bit difficult, but it means, you know, in, in particular, this was actually designed for attacking ships. If you know that you want to hit above uh, the armor on a, on a battleship, then you can actually do that. You could target the deck or, or something like that to achieve a more substantial impact. So, uh, that covers automatic handoff, manual handoff, and force correlate of the Maverick. These are kind of more advanced modes in which you can use them. I hope that you all enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all next time.